Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Hello, and welcome to Sobcast the Podcast. As usual, I would like to warn you that even though Sobcast the Podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we're going to be talking about some not-so-good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and (laughs) the current state of my brain. The rumors are true. I am reporting live from a depressive episode. It's a rerun. I have seen it before. I'm just kind of looking forward to some commercial breaks. (laughs) I thought it would be the perfect time to talk about, one... The difference between sadness and depression to how I prevent slipping from sadness into depression. And three, what happens when that ice gets too slippery and I just fall on my butt right into the depression river, (laughs) which is where I am right now. Actually, to be quite frank, I, where I am right now is is physically my bed. I am recording live from my bed. It just felt safer than my desk, which is about, what, I was going to say 10 feet away, but there's absolutely no way it's that far away. 10 inches. I don't know. I didn't do that great in math class. It's, just, it's over there. You can just trust me on that. My um, portable setup is not portable, I'll tell you. I realized that somewhere in my move and my decluttering or whatever I did, uh, I got rid of all my microphone covers, of which I bought in like a depressive spiral, I don't know, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, So that I would have different color options. So I had uh, like any color from pink to orange. From pink to orange. (laughs) From pink to to whatever the opposite of pink is. Um, But they're all gone now. So instead I'm using this sock. And I think it's going pretty well. Considering that it usually is on my foot. Don't worry. It is fresh from the laundry. Covered in cat hair, but <laughs> smells actually, yeah, smells nice. Smells like fresh laundry. Oh my gosh, am I an adult? I have fresh smelling socks. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> All right, so the difference between sadness and depression. It's a good question. It's a good, it's. It's a really good question. Let me tell you, let me give you a a little bit of a play-by-play of what happened over the last few days and we can walk through it together and maybe we'll discover some of the differences between sadness and depression together. So today is Thursday and a few days ago over the weekend... I went to a very big event. It was a convention. I was there at a booth selling my wares, saying hi to people. It was extremely overwhelming in all of the ways you would expect, as in like seeing so many people, um putting out a lot of energy, taking in a lot of energy, but wow, wow, wow. I mean, it was also all the best things. Um, I got to hear people's stories and people told me about what they're doing to prevent the sadness avalanche, like yoga and like different video games that calm them and Dungeons and Dragons and 
I live for that. It is like my absolute greatest honor on this planet to hear <laughs> your stories. Um, so the event was three days. The, the first day was so overwhelming that I actually got a migraine and went to bed really early. So I guess my body was kind of like, wait, what? Like, I kept feeling like my soul was in it. Like, my soul was very excited to be there. But my brain and my body were kind of panicking a little bit. It didn't feel like it should be allowed that all these people were together. And uh, just for the record, I liked how the convention like made sure that they had every safety precaution in place. You had to show your vaccine card to even be able to get in. Yada, yada, yada. The point is that I was there and there were also people there and we were there together and there was interaction that I did. So by the end of those three days, I actually was flying pretty high. I think I was feeling excited. It was so wonderful. Oh my gosh, like beyond comprehension to see people come up to the table and look at my artwork with their eyeballs in front of me because I've been selling it online since, you know, for over a year now. Um, But I've never gotten to see people react to it in real time. So, That was just lit me up inside. Just so excited. I can't wait to make more things. Um, And also, I was proud of myself for talking to people. I was excited that I memorized some people's names. And some people remembered my name. Like, that's so... What? Like, that's that's pretty big, right? And it's something I haven't had to do in a while. Because of this little thing called pandemic. Like, whatever. So then I came home and I was so tired. I was very tired and I ended up taking a day just to rest. I was, I had all this work I was planning to do and when I really plotted it out and was like, how much of this do I actually have to prioritize in terms of urgency, it came up that pretty much none of it was as important as I was telling myself that it was. That is actually a huge helpful tip that I learned in occupational therapy, which I can definitely talk about in another episode if you want, Um, is avoiding that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm behind. I am the worst. I am like, because I didn't accomplish this one thing on my to-do list, I am the worst person of all time and I will never find success or love again. I deserve nothing. Which I've never felt because I, I'm very put together. But um, just in case any of you have know someone who's felt that way. So, um, yeah, rested. And then was like, you know, I'm very tired and I am coming off of this huge high. So there's a really good chance that I'm going to lose lose control a little bit and potentially get really sad. Um, especially, I, did, I actually was very aware of this also during the convention, I should, I should mention. <laughs> it was during the convention, I should mention, that a couple of times I would just get hit by sadness really hard and it was so fleeting. So it kind of didn't It rattled me for sure, but it didn't like affect my entire day. Like, this is so silly, but I walked out of the building and kind of, it was really crowded outside and there are a lot of people yelling, like they want you to buy passes to the convention from them or they just have a lot to say. And somebody yelled at me, hey, I want you to be my girlfriend. And for some reason a reason that just broke 
my heart right there because I don't want to belong to anybody, I guess. I don't want anyone to think that they can have me at all. Apparently is what I learned on the way to get my pumpkin spice cold brew bullshit. And then I bounced back. But knowing that that sadness was available in my body uh, made me worry that there would be a time where I couldn't bounce back. So I prepared. I decided to do um, a little extra like self-care. Man, that word gets thrown around so much. I'm going to call it self-care for the like, I don't know, to help this really well told story that is extremely linear and has had no weird uh, deviations whatsoever. So I planned to go on a hike outside. Uh, I planned to go to the store and get food, which always makes me really happy. I planned on taking a bath. I love a bath. Um, I... Ooh, I decided that I would read before bed instead of scrolling on my phone. And what else? I made sure to have a lot of water. And I I did those things for a few days. And I actually thought it was working pretty well. (laughs) So um, I was kind of surprised when... After, I mean, a a pretty normal day for me, uh, that when I laid down, all of a sudden it was like all the sadness that maybe I'd been, I don't know, avoiding or maybe was just building up and I hadn't noticed it or maybe is just um, part of the process of my healing it all just rushed to my head really fast and um that's the the end of my story (laughs) and where I can begin this uh comparison between sadness and depression so the sadness the sadness that hit me in that moment it was like 11 o'clock at night I started crying a lot. It was very, like, heavy in my chest. My throat hurt. That's very normal when I'm having negative emotions. And I want to say there's some kind of, like, metaphor about how it's because I have a problem communicating when I'm upset or what I'm upset about. And I think I need to work on that. But um, that's for my future therapist to worry about. (laughs) It's all up to my future therapist. If taking care of your mental health has been a challenge over the past year and a half, you're not alone. Literally, you're not. We get you. Coming this fall, the Dive Through app will be featuring free interactive courses created with mental health professionals, including a course titled Navigating Life in a Pandemic, which I will definitely be checking out. You'll learn to identify the different types of stress you might be experiencing, the various ways collective grief might show up, and the best ways to work through it all. Download the Dive Through app for free in the App Store and Google Play. I knew exactly why I was crying, and it was definitely related to my breakup. I also was a little angry. I was feeling some injustice. And um, I did notice, and I did pat myself on the back a little bit for this, I felt sad, um not because I was missing anybody, but more because I had this urge, I think, to share some of the experiences that I had had over that weekend. But I don't have someone with me who I can like unload all that on all the time, which sounds really unenjoyable, doesn't it? Um, to be unloaded on. <laughs> But anyway, I went from having someone that I talked to every day and, like, could talk about 
cereal with and blah, 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 um, to not. And yeah, that makes me sad. It is a sad, it is a sad fact. It is also a happy fact in a lot of ways because I think my writing is only going to get better. I think I have an outlet with, with you. Now I get to unload on you. You're my new boyfriend. Isn't it great? Um, I was mostly just sad that I had been sharing that part of myself with someone who ultimately didn't want to be with me for so long. And that is sad. So I was like, yeah, it makes sense you're sad. It's okay to be sad. That is a sad thing. Let it out. Just like that part in Princess Diaries when the mom is like, you cry. You cry. My mom always said not to cry, but you go ahead and cry. I live in a fire station. I'm a painter, apparently. And I make a living as a painter. Or I have a ton of money left over from my divorce to your father. I don't know. There needs to be a Princess Diaries prequel so I can know everything about the mom, apparently. So, when did the sadness turn into depression? Well, I turned to some coping mechanisms, used some tools from my brain toolbox, Like, I put on one of my very favorite ASMR videos. I've been listening to it a lot lately. It is a woman just saying affirmations in a very soothing voice. And I usually hate affirmations. I usually find them so mm, grinding, cringy. I don't know. But for some reason, these just really are calming and... I feel really good when I watch the video. That's why I put it on. But um, I couldn't even concentrate on it. And I was like, oh, okay. So that coping mechanism isn't working, which means I'm kind of starting to slip a little bit. So I, oh, I drank some water. I like got up out of bed and like moved around. Uh, kind of just thinking like, okay, there's like this negative energy in me. Maybe I can just, like, walk it out a little bit. I don't know. I was also sobbing, like, loudly, and I was kind of worried that I would wake someone up. For some reason, like, I don't think about my neighbors all day, but after, like, 10.30 p.m., I just assume every single person in this building has a newborn baby, and I'm responsible for waking it up with my sobbing. When, when honestly, it probably should be the other way around. The newborn baby should be worried about waking me up. But here we are. What else did I do? Oh, okay. I wrote it down. Um, I started scrolling on TikTok, which is a tricky, it's a tricky one because you don't know what you're going to get when you're scrolling on TikTok. What happened, what happened was... I started scrolling on TikTok. I definitely got like little hits of serotonin, just like a little bit of like, ha clever, ooh. But all of a sudden it was one o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden I was super uncomfortable in my own body. And the biggest thing that I noticed was that I went from being in a state of sad, a state of sadness that I knew was about a very specific thing. It was um, temporary. I knew that it was temporary. I could see the end in sight. So it was sadness, but it was in my control. It was sadness, but I was going to be able to let it out. It was sadness and I was going to sit in it and then I was going to be able to get up. But when it got heavier, when 
I felt like I might not be able to actually get up. <laughs> Literally, I just wanted to stay in bed. When I started thinking things like, you don't have to go to sleep because no one needs you tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. You could just stay up and and, and watch friggin' TikTok until you get one of those guys that come up and are like, hey, we noticed you've been scrolling a while. You okay there, buddy? Just scroll on past. Depression, I realized, was this heaviness where I can't see the end. I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even though, like, I have the knowledge that it's there. And I have the proof because... How many times have I been depressed and then I am not, right? I've gotten through it before. I, the rational part of me is like, you're gonna be okay. But, uh, depression is powerful. (laughs) And, uh, all of a sudden it felt very out of control to me. So, sorry, I just started feeling like, like a ghost. I don't know how else to explain it. Anyway, when you can't see the end in sight of depression, I think, at least I tend to look backward because I can see the light over there in the past and I want to be like okay like how did I get in this freaking tunnel like what caused this was it the convention was it all the people was it the phone call that I had on Tuesday morning about a project that I think is gonna be really hard but I really want to do and I'm gonna do it was it that Was it looking at my bank account and feeling overwhelmed? Was it uh, just, (laughs) was it just thinking my ex's name and being like, oh, wow. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) great. Was it, what was it? What did I do? Did I eat something weird? That's something that gets really stuck in my head. I'm like, was it the gluten? Should I give up gluten again? Should I be vegan again? Oh my God, I did. I ate a lot of cheese. I did. I ate a lot of cheese. That could be going straight to my brain. It could. Maybe I should try it again. Even though I saw absolutely no difference. Except for that I missed cheese. Is it useful to look back and try to figure out what caused the slippage from sadness to depression? I don't know. It can definitely lead to um, overanalyzing and overthinking, though, which is what I did until I just, like, woke up. Like, I don't remember falling asleep. Like, it wasn't like I drifted off or anything. I think I just fell asleep, obviously curled up in a very, like, uncomfortable position so that when I woke up, I was aching all over, which doesn't help when you want to just stay in bed all day. It's almost like your body hurts so that you can just stay horizontal. But I did it. I got out of bed 99.9% because I am dog sitting and I didn't want the little baby doggy to feel neglected or feel like she was going to go pee pee in her little house that she has here. So thank you, dog, for getting me up, getting me out of bed. I had to put pants on. If you're going to go outside to be a butler to a small dog and pick up her poopies, you have to wear pants or at least some kind of covering. (laughs) I know from experience. (laughs) I'm still uncomfortable in my body. That's another thing about depression versus sadness I think sadness it is it can't you definitely hold it in in 
in your bod. Uh, you might feel it in your chest, feel really tight. You might have a tummy ache. Um, and the, the, a lot of people actually have those symptoms with depression. So, you know, it gets all muddled. But for me, um, it all feels... Um, Yikes. Okay, I'm about to talk about something kind of horrifying, at least to me. It's uh, that feeling of the dream when you are trying to run really fast, but you are moving really slowly, like you're trying to move through jello. Do you know that dream? I have that dream quite a lot. And that really is the closest that I can describe it is the physical, the physical feeling. Um, in terms of expressing emotions, I feel like, (laughs) I mean, I had a, I had a meeting first thing in the morning and I nervously laughed through the whole thing. And I also told the person that I was meeting with like again and again, I'm so sorry. I'm really depressed. My brain isn't working well. Cool. 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 Just trying to make everyone comfortable. (laughs) Um, and, um. The laughing kind of hurt to do, if that makes sense. (laughs) So that's good. Uh, At the same time, I also felt like I could fall asleep at any moment. Just so exhausted. And I think sadness is exhausting. But when you're depressed, you're exhausted. Incredible. I was an English major and look, look at me now. Pure poetry. Um, I wrote here, I couldn't find comfort in things that are usually comforting. Yeah. I think that that is definitely depression. Um, because I express so much through crying, as I've shared before, I used to completely associate depression with crying because I would feel really overwhelmed. I would feel totally numb. I would feel that panic of like oh my gosh I'm slipping from like normal everyday worries and normal feelings into this dark place I I need to cry (laughs) but it's not just laying in your bed crying (laughs) even though that is what it looks like a lot for me Um, it's, I guess I want to say that when I am laying in my bed crying because of depression, it's not, um, because I'm crying necessarily about something. I'm usually crying because I don't know why I feel so bad. So that's cute. I think babies and I have that in common. Love that. But we were going to talk about some coping mechanisms, right? Didn't I say that? I already forgot the three things I said we would talk about. But I'm pretty sure I've talked about (laughs) my feelings a lot. So thank you for listening to that. Um, Okay, so every day I have things in place that I do to prevent the depression, to prevent the slippage. One of them, maybe the most important, is that I take my medicine at the same time every day. Or at least I try to get it at the same time every day, every morning. That just, like, made my brain totally turn. Did you hear, like, the last brain cell just, like, go to bed? It was, like, nighty-night. 
Good luck with the rest of your recording. I'm I'm out. (laughs) So, okay, I take my medicine. Yes. I, oh, I, I mean, this is very basic. I'm sure you just do this because you're a person who was together, but for me, it's a big deal. I make a little thing out of my skincare routine, and I put sunscreen on. And I brush my teeth because when I'm depressed or kind of flirting with falling into falling in depression, flirting into falling into falling in depression, when I'm kind of flirting with the falling, I will stop taking care of myself because it feels like too much. I'm already carrying this huge weight of, of whatever this is what is happening. So yeah, I will like not brush my teeth. So when I do brush my teeth, I'm like, hey, look at you. You're not that close to the line. You're doing great. Like you are in control. I exercise. Wow. I try to go outside and drink the water. All the things I was talking about before. Let's talk about, actually, let's talk about what happens if you have been sad and you maybe have slipped into depression and um, you just, you got to still function in some way. Something I did today, I will not say that it helped But I will say that it took up some time and felt productive was that I put makeup on. I don't think it, like, wiped away any of the the darkness, but now I have green eyeliner on. Hot makeup tip. Hot makeup tip from your favorite Mionagoro. Do you want to make your makeup cry proof? Let me tell you. Cream makeup products. If your skin likes them, I'm not sure that they would work for every skin type. My skin, I don't know. I think it's just considered like normal, maybe a little dry. But I use the cream foundation if I'm wearing foundation. I use it's like today I just used some cream concealer and then I use cream blush and highlighter from Kosas. I hope I'm saying that Kosas, Kosas. I love their cream blushes and highlighters. I use a little spongy guy from Real Techniques. It's pink. Um, and then waterproof, I, uh, what is it? Mascara. And then waterproof mascara. What am I using now? I don't know. It's in a blue tube. But um, I feel like I haven't really found a waterproof mascara that I'm like, this is the best mascara that's ever happened to me. However, I did freaking use some Grande Lash MD, which is an eyelash serum. And it freaking made my eyelashes super long. So mascara in general is working well for me, which is super annoying because I didn't want it to work because I never want to buy it again. But now that I know, I can't unknow. Don't even try it because then you'll know and then you can't unknow. And then we're all going to have to buy Grande Lash MD for the rest of our lives. What else? Oh, yeah. Um, If I... I'm feeling depressed and I think that there's going to be crying also. I try to avoid dark eyeshadow because it gets splotchy. I think like sparkles are good because they are already dispersed, if that makes sense. And I would avoid lipstick, especially lipstick that can get dry. And double, and double what? And also avoid lipstick that if you're making this very sad face, like one of the theater drama guys, the sad one, uh, don't use lipstick that could transfer onto your chin because then it gets stuck there. 
It really does. I know from experience. So I usually go for chapstick or Vaseline. Very fancy. But at least I tried, right? And then, I don't know. Job well done. Moisturized. And then if, if you are going somewhere where your makeup has to stay, really put the Urban Decay All Night Spray, I think is, works very well. And those are all my secrets. That's it. That's my whole memoir. Those are my, those are my beauty secrets. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, also, uh, okay. Let's say you wake up depressed. You have to remember to take your medicine. I'm talking to myself. You have to remember to take your medicine. Uh, but it will be helping you in ways that you're not going to feel right away, but it is helping you. So please take your medicine if you are on medicine. It helps me a lot to eat meals at at the regular times that I eat them. So I had breakfast this morning. I don't even remember what I had for breakfast because I guess it wasn't that exciting. But I had coffee and that was very good. And then I had lunch at lunchtime. Um, I get this. There's this weird phenomenon and I know I'm not the only one who feels this where when you're in the midst of the haze of depression time moves very weird it feels like it's constantly kind of like slipping and also pressing on you at the same time kind of like one of those slime videos where the kids make slime and then they pick it up and then it kind of goos over the whole table I'm the table but I'm also the child and I'm the slime I don't know Good metaphor. But uh, if I wasn't paying attention, I would not eat at normal times. I think I would, like, have breakfast and then it would be, like, 3.30 and I'd be like, oh, lunch, okay. And then in ways that I don't understand, I would feel crummy. I get hangry. And when you're depressed and hangry, that's a lot to deal with if you're already dealing with, uh, like, normal things in life, like answering emails and texts and making sure that no one poops on the rug. I'm dog sitting. I also have a cat. I might get the urge to poop on the rug. I'm not pointing any fingers here. Okay? All right. Glad we can all agree on that. (sighs) Beebs. I want to know your thoughts. Is that okay? I don't know if it's selfish. I want to know how you no, you're depressed if you deal with depression. I'm also interested in knowing um, about anxiety. Like, what's the difference between worrying and anxiety? I have not figured that out for myself. In fact, when I have anxiety, I usually think I'm having psychic premonitions. So the line is very blurry in terms of what is my anxiety and what is my reality. So... Maybe we can work on that one together. But yeah, I think in conclusion, for me, the biggest difference between sadness and depression is that sadness has an ending that I can see and depression does not and it feels like it's forever. And I think that's part of why it it sucks because that's very overwhelming Will I be okay? You're probably asking. Yeah. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, I'll be okay. I think I'm gonna hole up in in my bed a little bit. I think I, 
I did the thing where I wrote out all the things I was expecting to do and I prioritized them and that that really helped. So I have a couple more things on that list, but I'm going to bring them into my bed. Why not? It still counts if you do it laying down. (laughs) Does it feel like we're hanging out? To be completely honest, usually when I'm depressed, I just want to be alone so bad. And, um... So, I also have, like, a lot of fear. Probably irrational. I hope it's irrational. That I will just push everyone away in my life. Really cute. Like, as if I'm going to lose everyone I love in in one day. I think the fact that I did kind of, like, lose someone really important to me, like, in the course of a day, or at least that's how it felt, is not helping. But that was definitely an outlier. So, crying is cool. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will be able to see how my makeup is going to stay, even though I'm crying. Cream makeup, I'm telling you, it's the secret. Maybe starting a podcast where you, instead of getting a therapist, you just talk to people into your sparkly microphone that's covered with a sock. (laughs) Maybe that's the secret. Actually, (laughs) that's the thing. It's the hardest thing and it's Also, the best thing to know is that there is no secret. There is no secret. So, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry that you're missing it. You don't have to worry that you're not looking hard enough for it. Or that it passed you by. Because it's not a thing. There's no secret. Anyway, um, so have you checked out the podcast Instagram yet? You (laughs) should. You should. Um, I'm gonna go hug Mr. I think. He's been really nice. He licked my nose. It was really sweet. Okay. Hope that one made sense. Au revoir. Salute. (laughs) Goodbye from my bed. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.